Hey everyone, this is Mobius Y, and I'm here with Kanegis, who will be recording as I go over how to effectively play a Volus. Now, when you want to play a Volus, the first thing you want to do is choose whether you want to play as an aggressive Volus, which focuses more on killing enemies using heavier guns, or a support-focused Volus, which is more about debuffing enemies and keeping teammates alive with shield boost. Right now, I'm going to go over a more supportive playstyle with the Volus, which is my personal preference most of the time, and I tend to play them fairly often. So, when you're playing a support Volus, you typically want to use them on a team where you have higher damage output, or you have very good synergizing teammates, like a good Biotic or Tech squad. That way, your Volus can keep teammates alive while they focus strictly on killing enemies and you can help them in doing so by not only keeping them alive for longer periods of time but also debuffing enemies so that they can kill them faster. Now the first thing I usually do or suggest to other people who decide to play a support Volus is when you're building your Volus never spec into fitness if you're going with a support Volus. It's completely redundant. The shield boost damage reduction uh, Self-shield regeneration and invincibility frames or iframes render fitness completely redundant when you're playing a support Volus. Also when uh, playing a support Volus, I generally keep my shield boost, my passives, and my equipment the same. And the passives is the Volus training tree um, in their uh, powers breakdown. So, with Shield Boost, I spec Shield Boost for Radius, Recharge Speed, and Protection. And in the Volus Training Passives tree, I have it set up for Weapon Damage, Shield Boost, and Weapon Damage. This way, Shield Boost has the shortest possible cooldowns without having to cut the Weapon Damage output on your, the character itself. And the Radius on Shield Boost is large enough to cover entire Escort or Hack Circles, and you don't have to stay as close to Friendlies to keep them alive. The weapon passives allow lighter guns to pack a decent punch, giving you the ability to also be able to kill enemies and thus help the team in another way, on top of debuffing enemies and keeping your teammates alive. The equipment I use on all my support Volus, as I said, is generally the same, as well as the weapon I use. And I tend to use the Collector SMG with the magazine upgrade and the high velocity barrel. This gives me really low cooldowns and decent damage, and the infinite ammo gives me plenty of time between waves to prepare for the next wave, rather than having to waste time heading for ammo boxes. The equipment that I use as well is an SMG Amp 3, an Expert Package 5, a Power Efficiency Mod 3, and Drill Ammo 3. The SMG Amp and the Expert Package, combined with the Drill Ammo, give the Collector SMG really good punch, and the drill ammo offers very good armor penetration when combined with the high velocity barrel. You could use other ammos as well, such as armor piercing, incendiary, cryo, or warp. And I'll mention where you can use the cryo a little later. The power efficiency mod, uh, along with the expert package, also keep cooldowns very low, usually keeping shield boost and most other powers down to a three second or less power recharge speed, save for recon mine and biotic orbs. You could also use an Adrenaline mod to keep up with Vanguard very fast teammates such as Drell. Or the, the Volus Vanguard could use a Power Amplifier module to apply extra force and damage to his Biotic Charge. Now, I would like to go out and say that even, even a more support role Volus, they're all good against every faction, including uh, playing on Platinum, but each Volus is also specifically good about against one certain faction. So I'm going to cover each individual Volus separately now as they have their own individual skill sets and play styles that can be followed. So first up with the Volus Adept for a more support role. How I spec his two other powers, Biotic Orbs and Stasis. With Biotic Orbs I choose Radius, Recharge Speed, and Orb Count. And with Stasis I choose Stasis Strength, bonus power, or bubble. However, the rank 5 upgrade at, in stasis is entirely personal preference. This makes the Volus Adept very useful against Cerberus, as stasis completely neutralizes the Phantoms, which is the Cerberus faction's most dangerous unit, hands down. The reason I take the Radius upgrade in Biotic Orbs is because when I do cast them, I want to guarantee that they will hit my target and detonate a combo. 
So this way with the radius upgrade, even a dodging marauder or a rocket trooper will get hit by the orb and I will have detonated a combo. Bonus power in stasis, as I said, is a fine choice and it's what I have right now. As you can stasis an enemy or multiple enemies fairly rapidly and immediately shield boost right afterwards sometimes. You could go with the recharge speed for a constant reduction in the cooldown. However, it's typically only about two or three tenths of a second, so it's not critical if you don't have it. And next up is the Volus Engineer for a more support role. And his two uh, separate powers are Proximity Mine and Recon Mine. And how I have the Proximity Mine spec is for Radius, Slow, and Recharge Speed. And Recon is spec for Radius, Recharge Speed, and Invasive Scan. This gives the Volus Engineer a really big debuff zone with the Recon Mine when spec for both Invasive Scan and the Radius Upgrade. This NG setup is also very effective against collectors with the double slow mine evolutions as enemies such as collector captains and praetorians move extremely slowly when hit with a proxy mine and in the zone of a the debuff zone of a recon mine. This allows friendlies much more time to shoot them instead of having to backpedal and possibly break their line of sight. The slow evolution in the proximity mine also allows the engineer to trap its tire spawns during objectives or at the start of a wave for a fairly short length of time, but for a good amount so that enemies can, or sorry, friendlies can uh, kill them very quickly. But what you want to do is when you run it up on a spawn, you want to first hit them with the proxy mine, then drop a recon mine in front of the spawn to create the debuff zone and basically stop the spawn from spreading out too quickly for a good six to eight seconds. The double slow evolutions also lets friendlies, uh, particularly those using sniper rifles, line up much easier shots on things such as primes, brutes, and pyros, which need to be killed very quickly. Now, the engineer is also the best bolus for using cryo ammo as the slow effect from cryo ammo will stack with the proximity and recon mine and just slow down enemies even more so he's the best choice for using cryo ammo. The engineer is also way more effective when your team is camping more. Such good maps as Firebase Giant, Firebase Dagger and Firebase Ghost these are very good maps for the engineer to set up and help the team with uh, holding down a certain location. When the team is more mobile, such as a uh, fast-moving biotic or tech squad, the cooldowns have to be managed much more appropriately as the mines will interrupt uh, shield boosting dramatically, especially the recon mines. So you don't want to spam them both everywhere. Instead, you want to use proximity and recon combos to either trap and paint spawns or mark two bosses that are close together and keep them close together. Also, such squishier mobile teams probably are putting out enough damage, so you don't need to focus as much on debuffing. You want to shift your focus more towards shield boosting them to keep them alive rather than debuffing, but you still do want to use the mines at least once per wave. Next up is the Vola Sentinel for more of a support role. His two powers are Combat Drone and Decoy, and I have them currently spec. Combat Drone is spec currently spec for Detonate, Shields and Damage, and Chain Lightning. And Decoy is currently spec for Duration, Shock, and Exploding Decoy. Now, about Evolution 5 and Combat Drone, I currently have Shields and Damage, but the other evolution, which is also a Shock evolution, works just fine as well. This makes both his powers basically enemy stagger locking machines as any enemy, enemy that is close by to any either of his pets will be staggered and when the pet dies it'll cause another stagger over a very wide area. This Vola Sentinel setup is, is incredibly useful against Geth even on Platinum as most of the Geth units go absolutely apeshit for drones and decoys or both especially Geth Primes. One thing about the combat drone I found is that when I take the detonate evolution, I found it's redundant to also take the rockets evolution as the drone will habitually back up from enemies to shoot its rockets at them, so you're not getting any use out of the detonate evolution. So if you if you do decide to go with rockets, you probably want to stick with shields and damage in both evolutions 4 and 5 for the for the drone.
And the other thing as well about decoy is I have tried the durability upgrade on decoy, but I often tend to plant it somewhere predicting a spawn to appear in that area. So I want it to last longer uh, for a certain length of time as opposed to take more machine gun fire from, from mooks. The durability evolution tends to only help it survive better against enemies such as cannibals and assault troopers. Anything with a big cannon such as a Geth Prime or a Scion, it only helps it survive maybe one extra shot from any of those enemies. The other thing about the Vola Sentinel is that both of his powers they have very short cooldowns, so it's very possible for the Vola Sentinel to run into a spawn, cloak, drop a decoy, drop a combat drone, and then get out of the spawn just as Cloak is running away so that he can start to deal with... As I said, with both, with both these powers set up this way, they cause huge amounts of stagger with or without drones, rank 5 shock evolution. Although, that, as I said, that evolution is up to personal preference. And finally, the final Volus is the Volus Vanguard. And how I spec him out for a more supporter role is with his biotic orbs and his biotic charge. Uh, for the orbs, again, I choose radius, recharge speed, and orb count. And with biotic charge, I choose radius, weapon synergy, and bonus power. And with the Vanguard, I use the biotic orbs the same way as I do with the Volus Adept. I either keep them on almost all the time, to keep my shield boost and my biotic charge cooldowns very short, or I cast them frequently for pretty much guaranteed combinate, combo detonators. Uh, this might sound a little bit odd, but the Volus Vanguard with this setup is actually quite good against the Reapers, as with his Gambler's Biotic Charge and four Biotic Orbs, he can detonate multiple combos very quickly when using these in combination. So, if you're playing with teammates that have uh, good amounts of tech or biotic support such as area reeve or flamer you can set off multiple biotic or fire explosions very quickly which are incredibly useful to dealing with the reaper armor this is also the only volus able to keep up with other vanguard teammates without using an adrenaline mod module um, this leaves the power this leaves the um, armor mod slot open to use something such as a power amp or power efficiency mod. One big thing about the Volus Vanguard spec this way is that bonus power on Biotic Charge does not give invincibility frames as it does with the Barrier upgrade at rank 6, but it does often allow for an immediate shield boost for yourself and your nearby friendlies, giving you some damage reduction and invincibility frames. Also, the Weapon Synergy evolution in Biotic Charge gives you a pretty good damage boost after charging, making it much easier to finish off mooks or tougher armor enemies that are very weak at that point. So, general support tips uh, for all of the Volus classes. As I said, they're all very useful against all factions, but each one is specifically good. It's just a little bit better against a specific faction as well. The biggest thing about playing a support Volus when you're using shield boost as often as you probably will be is that it's better to prevent damage completely rather than regenerate damaged shields you want to use the shield boost invincibility frames to prevent damage from things such as atlas rockets or banshee balls or basically anything major like that you want to prevent that damage altogether rather than recover somebody's lost shields the other thing too the other reason for this too is that when you have zero fitness, it's very possible to get hit by something such as a Banshee Ball that hit it, when it first hits you it does a lot of damage and it has some damage over time and that damage over time can kill you due to off-host lag because you, the shield either you were caught on a cooldown being unable to use shield boost or because the shield boost was cast but it didn't take effect on your character so you basically still die. Another thing, too, is you want to stay closer to higher damage friendlies, giving them constant damage reduction and shield restoration. This will keep them in the fight a lot longer and allow them to kill more enemies much more quickly. 
Also, if you're playing on a team with um, at least one or two infiltrators, you typically want to hang around a more close quarters combat infiltrator as opposed to a sniper infiltrator, say one using a raider as opposed to one using a javelin, as the close quarters combat infiltrator will be getting, they'll be playing a much more aggressive fashion and you want to keep them, you want to keep them in the game longer, keep them up and keep them killing enemies. Another thing about shield boost is that spamming it isn't necessarily bad. It can cause their enemies to bug out and they won't be able to use their powers or shoot their gun for a moment until they heavy melee to get out of it, but you're much better off timing proper shield boosts when needed. The easiest way to do this is to listen to nearby teammates' character dialogue. When you hear a teammate's character scream something such as, Lost Shields, or I'm Hit, or you hear that funny buzzing noise that those Geth characters make, you want to pop a shield boost right then and there and that will instantly regenerate your your teammates' shields, and they'll be back in the fight right away. This is very helpful for hack and escort objectives, most more notably escort objectives, as you could often you'll get caught out in the open with no cover during an escort objective, and rather than have to leave the escort circle to go and regenerate their shields again, your teammates will just they'll have their shields restored immediately once you pop that shield boost right then and there and they don't have to leave the escort circle so it'll keep things moving a lot much more smoothly another major thing about playing a more supportive volus is you want to whore the cloak religiously it takes aggro off of the volus causing enemies to focus more on either your pets if you're the sentinel or other teammates which are probably more durable than you hence why it's also still important to keep those teammates alive and the other thing too is when you're not cloaked, if you're caught in the midst of a cooldown and you're about to get shot by say a Scion or an Atlas rocket, you want to, instead of cloaking with the light melee, you want to use the heavy melee, which is called defensive stance. What this actually does is the first pulse from defensive stance will restore a few of your shields, but it also grants about a second and a half of invincibility frames. So that's, those are very key. Another thing when using the Volus, uh, in particular a cloak and shield boost, is even while shooting an enemy, uh, like, such as a tougher enemy, such as a brute, you want to, you can use shield boost and your cloak while shooting because this will give a few seconds for your collector SMG to recharge a few shots, allowing you to put more shots downrange before having to worry and stop and let the shots fully recharge. One final thing about the Volus cloak is that while you are cloaked, shooting or using a power does not break the Volus cloak. It doesn't grant a damage bonus, but that doesn't really matter seeing as how you can get more tactical use out of it as you can cloak and get around an enemy and then shoot them in the back before they fully realize that you've moved. One final thing about playing a support Volus is you want to help with the objectives. Obviously, you'll be in hack and escort circles helping with that, but the best assistance you can lend is during either four devices or pizza objectives. What you want to do with both of those is stick close to whoever is carrying the pizza or doing the device, if they're not an infiltrator, and just keep them alive once they start taking gunfire. The best thing, best way to help with four devices as well is if the teammate's an infiltrator, stay away from them. However, if they're not an infiltrator, you want to stay close to them and use, use your cloak to keep aggro away from both of you and put it more on the other two teammates who are hopefully farther away from the objective and you should be able to cloak about twice before the device is finished and once the teammate that is actually doing the device starts taking fire that's when you want to pop your shield boost that way you'll you'll keep them on the device and hopefully nothing gets close and staggers them off and they can finish that up nice and quickly if you Playing the support Volus this way, you might not be killing as much, uh, but if your teammates are talkative, they'll likely be very thankful for your help as you'll keep them alive a lot longer. Granted, there will be situations where... But I'll just put it this way. You can't be everywhere at once. You can't keep everybody alive at the same time. So if somebody is off on the other side of the map dying, it's nothing to worry about go ahead and revive them and stay closer to them if they're having trouble or whatnot. But generally speaking, it's it's mostly up to you how you choose to play it. I highly recommend playing Volus this way and getting good with it as it's very fun to play these classes in many ways on any difficulty, especially with friends. 
Anyways, I believe that is everything, so I will simply leave it at that.